John sat on the rocky shore of Patmos, the salty breeze from the Aegean Sea rustling his hair. Exiled and alone, his only companions were his thoughts and his prayers. It was during one of these moments of deep meditation that an overwhelming presence surrounded him. The air grew thick and the light seemed to shimmer around him. John closed his eyes, feeling a sense of peace and anticipation wash over him. Suddenly, a voice like a trumpet sounded behind him. Do not be afraid, John, the voice said. He turned to see an angel, radiant and awe-inspiring, standing before him. The angel's eyes shone with a divine light, and John knew that this was a messenger from Jesus himself. The angel extended a hand and a scroll appeared, its edges glowing with a golden light. John, you are to witness the revelations that must come to pass, the angel proclaimed. Write down everything you see and hear, for it is a message to the seven churches and all believers. John nodded, his heart pounding with a mixture of fear and excitement. He knew this vision was unlike any other he had experienced. As John took the scroll, the scene around him shifted. He found himself standing in a vast, otherworldly landscape. In the distance, he saw a city of immense size and grandeur, its towers reaching towards the heavens. This was Babylon, but not the ancient city he knew from history. This Babylon was different, more sinister, more powerful. The angel spoke again, his voice echoing through the air. This is the great city Babylon, the mother of prostitutes and of the abominations of the earth. She represents a corrupt religious system that has always opposed true worship and will dominate in the last days. John watched in awe as the vision zoomed in, revealing the opulence and decadence of Babylon. Its streets were filled with people from every nation, engaging in acts of idolatry and immorality. John's heart ached for those led astray by this deception. The angel's words echoed in his mind, emphasizing the importance of understanding and resisting this corrupt system. He knew that the vision he was witnessing was a dire warning for all believers, the scene shifted once more, and John saw a woman sitting on a scarlet beast covered with blasphemous names. The beast had seven heads and ten horns, and the woman was adorned in luxurious garments of purple and scarlet, glittering with gold, precious stones, and pearls. In her hand, she held a golden cup filled with abominations and the filth of her adulteries. Her name was written on her forehead, Mystery, Babylon the Great, the mother of prostitutes, and of the abominations of the earth. John's breath caught in his throat as he took in the sight. The woman was drunk with the blood of the saints, those who had borne witness to Jesus. The angel explained, The woman you saw is the great city that rules over the kings of the earth. She symbolizes the Antichrist and his government, which will lead many astray. John felt a surge of anger and sadness. This woman, this city, represented everything that was opposed to God's truth. The vision made it clear how alluring and deceptive this false religion would be, drawing people in with its riches and power while leading them away from true worship. John's vision continued to unfold, revealing the extent of Babylon's influence. He saw kings and merchants of the earth weeping and mourning over her as she was judged. They had grown rich from her excessive luxuries, and her downfall would be their ruin. The angel's voice rang out, Fallen, fallen is Babylon the Great. She has become a dwelling for demons and a haunt for every impure spirit. John watched as Babylon's grandeur turned to ashes. The vision showed the corruption that had spread like a plague, infecting all nations and peoples. Idolatry, greed, and immorality had taken root, leading humanity away from God. John's heart ached for the souls ensnared by these deceptions. He knew that the believers needed to be vigilant and discerning, to recognize and reject the false teachings of Babylon. The vision served as a stark reminder of the importance of remaining faithful to God's word and truth. The angel turned to John, his expression solemn. Write these things down, he instructed. Warn the believers of the coming deceptions. Urge them to remain faithful and to discern the truth from falsehood. The time is short, and the enemy is cunning. John nodded, feeling the weight of his responsibility. He knew that his writings would be a lifeline for those struggling to stay true to their faith amidst the growing tide of deception. The angel's words were a call to action, a plea for vigilance and faithfulness. 
As the vision began to fade, John felt a renewed sense of purpose. He understood that the revelations he had witnessed were not just for him, but for all believers. They were a guide, a warning, and a source of hope in a world increasingly led astray by false teachings. John's pen scratched across the parchment, his mind replaying the vivid images he had seen. The vision of Babylon's grandeur and corruption weighed heavily on his heart. As he wrote, he imagined the bustling streets of cities far beyond Patmos, where people unknowingly walked into the traps set by this false religion. Babylon's influence began to spread like wildfire. Its doctrines, appealing yet deceitful, resonated with the desires and ambitions of people across the world. Wealth, power, and pleasure were promised to all who embraced its teachings. John could see the merchants, kings, and common folk alike being drawn into this web of deception their eyes blinded to the truth. He wrote about the seductive nature of Babylon's religion, how it preyed upon the weaknesses and desires of humanity. The angel's words echoed in his mind. Fallen, fallen is Babylon the Great. John knew this fall would not come easily, and many would be ensnared before the end. As Babylon's influence grew, so did the challenges faced by the true believers. In cities and towns, Christians found themselves increasingly isolated and persecuted. The false religion of Babylon demanded loyalty and worship, and those who refused were ostracized or worse. John saw visions of believers gathering in secret, their faces etched with determination and fear. They read from the scriptures, prayed for strength, and supported one another in their struggle to remain faithful. He felt their pain and their resolve understanding that their battle was not just physical, but deeply spiritual. These believers faced temptations daily. The promises of Babylon were alluring, and some among them wavered. John wrote passionately, urging his fellow Christians to stay strong, to remember the teachings of Jesus and the prophecies that warned of these times. His words were both a plea and a beacon of hope, reminding them that they were not alone in their struggle. In the midst of this turmoil, the leaders of the early church recognized the dire threat posed by Babylon's growing influence. They gathered in council, discussing how to guide and protect their congregations. The need for discernment was paramount. The line between truth and falsehood had never been so blurred. John recorded their deliberations, the urgency in their voices as they planned ways to counteract the false teachings. They encouraged believers to study the scriptures diligently to pray for wisdom, and to seek the guidance of the Holy Spirit. They emphasized the importance of community, urging Christians to support and hold each other accountable. John's writings became a central part of this effort. His visions and the angel's messages provided a clear warning and a path forward. The leaders disseminated his writings, using them to educate and fortify their congregations against the seductive lies of Babylon. The visions continued to come to John, each one more intense and revealing than the last. He saw the beast upon which the woman sat, its seven heads and ten horns a terrifying sight. The angel explained the symbolism. The beast represented the Antichrist and his government, a powerful force that would support and propagate Babylon's false religion. John's hand trembled as he wrote, the weight of this revelation heavy upon him. The beast was not just a symbol, it was an imminent reality. The Antichrist would rise, bringing with him an era of unprecedented deception and persecution. He described the beast in detail, its blasphemous names and the power it wielded. This vision was a stark reminder of the battle ahead, a battle not of flesh and blood, but of spiritual forces. John knew that understanding the enemy was crucial for the believers. They needed to recognize the signs and stand firm in their faith. With the revelation of the beast, John and the early church leaders understood that the time for passive resistance was over. They needed to prepare for an active battle against the forces of deception. The believers began to organize, developing strategies to spread the true gospel and expose the lies of Babylon. John wrote letters of encouragement and instruction, urging believers to put on the full armor of God. He reminded them of the power of prayer, faith, and the word of God. These were their weapons, and with them, they could withstand the assaults of the enemy. He described the spiritual warfare they were engaged in, likening it to a battle where the stakes were eternal. The early Christians, though few in number and lacking worldly power, were strengthened by their faith and the knowledge that God was with them. 
The believers started to see small victories. Some who had been led astray began to question the teachings of Babylon and return to the true faith. These victories, though small, were significant. They gave hope and renewed strength to the Christian community. John's visions continued to unfold with unrelenting intensity. One night, as he sat in silent prayer, the angel returned, bringing with him another revelation. John saw a figure emerging from the shadows, a man with an aura of authority and charisma. This was the false prophet, a key ally of Babylon and the Antichrist. The angel spoke with a tone of grave warning. This is the false prophet who will deceive many. He will perform great signs, even causing fire to come down from heaven to the earth in full view of the people. He will lead them to worship the beast and its image. John watched as the false prophet captivated the masses with his miraculous feats. People were awestruck by his power, believing that he was sent by God. The false prophet used this influence to promote the worship of the Antichrist, further entrenching Babylon's false religion. John's heart grew heavy as he witnessed the deception. He knew that the believers needed to be warned about this new threat. With a sense of urgency, he began to write about the false prophet, detailing his rise and the danger he posed to the faithful. The vision continued, showing the rapid spread of the false prophet's influence. John saw crowds gathering to hear him speak, their faces filled with admiration and awe. The false prophet's words were smooth and persuasive, promising peace, prosperity, and unity. His message resonated with the hopes and desires of the people, drawing them deeper into the deception. John saw entire communities turning away from the true worship of God, seduced by the false prophet's promises. The leaders of Babylon used his influence to solidify their control, enacting policies that persecuted those who refused to conform. The faithful were forced to worship the image of the beast or face severe punishment. John's vision highlighted the intense pressure faced by the believers. He wrote with passion, urging them to resist the allure of the false prophet's miracles and to remain steadfast in their faith. He emphasized the importance of discerning the true nature of these signs and miracles, reminding them of Jesus' warnings about false prophets. Despite the overwhelming influence of the false prophet, John saw pockets of resistance among the believers. Small groups gathered in secret, refusing to bow to the image of the beast. They continued to worship God, drawing strength from the scriptures and from each other. John witnessed acts of incredible bravery and faith. Believers risked their lives to share the gospel, knowing that they could be arrested or killed at any moment. Their courage inspired others to stand firm, even in the face of persecution. John wrote about these acts of resistance, highlighting the importance of faith and community. He urged the believers to support one another, to pray fervently, and to trust in God's promises. His words were a source of encouragement, reminding them that they were not alone in their struggle. As the battle between truth and deception raged on, John saw evidence of divine intervention. Miracles and signs from God began to appear, providing hope and reassurance to the beleaguered believers. These divine acts countered the false prophet's deceptions, reinforcing the truth of God's word. John saw angels descending from heaven, delivering messages of hope and strength to the faithful. He witnessed miraculous healings and signs that affirmed God's presence and power. These interventions bolstered the believers' faith, giving them the strength to continue their resistance. John wrote about these divine acts with a sense of awe and gratitude. He emphasized that God had not abandoned his people and that his power was greater than any deception of the false prophet. These signs were a testament to God's faithfulness and a reminder that victory was assured. As the believer's resistance grew stronger, the false prophet became more desperate. John saw him intensifying his efforts to deceive and control the masses. He performed even more spectacular miracles, hoping to regain the people's trust and allegiance. The false prophet's actions became increasingly aggressive. He incited violence against the believers, using fear and intimidation to force compliance. John saw scenes of persecution where Christians were imprisoned, tortured, and executed for their refusal to worship the beast. Despite this, the believers' faith remained unshaken. John wrote about their resilience and courage, urging them to continue their fight against the false prophet's lies. He reminded them that their suffering was not in vain, and that their perseverance would be rewarded. 
John's visions continued with startling clarity. He saw Babylon, now more powerful and insidious than ever before. The angel stood beside him, revealing Babylon's ultimate plan, to dominate all religious worship and consolidate its power over the hearts and minds of humanity. John felt a chill as he witnessed the intricate strategies Babylon employed to weave its influence into every aspect of life. Babylon's leaders, cloaked in the guise of piety and righteousness, infiltrated governments, religious institutions, and cultural establishments. They preached a message of unity and peace, but laced it with doctrines that subtly diverted worship from God to the Antichrist. John saw how easily people were swayed, drawn to the promises of prosperity and security offered by this false religion. John's heart ached for the believers who were being led astray. He knew that exposing these deceptions was vital. With a heavy heart, he began to write about Babylon's plan, detailing how it sought to ensnare the faithful and lead them away from the truth. His words were a clarion call to vigilance and discernment, urging believers to remain steadfast in their faith. As John's vision shifted, he saw the Antichrist emerging as a central figure in Babylon's plan. Charismatic and persuasive, the Antichrist captivated the masses, presenting himself as a savior in times of chaos. John watched as people from all walks of life flocked to him, believing in his promises of a new era of peace and prosperity. The angel explained, This is the man of lawlessness, the beast who will deceive many. He will demand worship and allegiance, and those who refuse will face severe persecution. John shuddered at the sight of the Antichrist's followers, their faces filled with fervent devotion to a false savior. John wrote about the Antichrist's rise to power, emphasizing the need for believers to recognize the signs and resist his allure. He described the Antichrist's deceptive tactics, using miracles and signs to legitimize his authority. John's words served as both a warning and a guide, helping believers understand the nature of the enemy they faced. The angel's voice grew solemn as he delivered a final warning to John. Write this down, for the time is short. Warn the believers that they must stay true to their faith, for the deceptions will grow stronger and many will be led astray. John felt the urgency in the angel's words, knowing that this warning was crucial for the survival of the faithful. John's vision shifted to scenes of believers struggling against the growing tide of deception. He saw families torn apart, communities divided, and individuals facing immense pressure to conform to the false religion of Babylon. Yet, amidst the darkness, he also saw rays of hope. Small groups of believers holding fast to their faith, supporting each other, and spreading the true gospel. With a sense of urgency, John wrote the angel's warning, urging believers to remain vigilant and discerning. He emphasized the importance of community and prayer, encouraging believers to seek strength and guidance from one another and from God. His message was clear. The path ahead would be fraught with challenges, but with faith and perseverance, they could withstand the storm. The vision continued, showing John the escalating conflict between the followers of Babylon and the true believers. The battle was not fought with swords or spears, but with words, actions, and faith. John saw believers boldly proclaiming the gospel, even in the face of persecution and death. Their courage and conviction inspired others to question the false teachings of Babylon and seek the truth. John wrote about the spiritual warfare unfolding before him, describing the bravery and resilience of the believers. He recounted stories of individuals who, despite immense pressure, refused to renounce their faith. These acts of defiance became beacons of hope, lighting the way for others to follow. The battle of truth was intense and unrelenting. John saw how Babylon's followers responded with increasing hostility, resorting to violence and oppression to silence the believers. Yet, the faith of the Christians remained unshaken. They drew strength from their unity and from the promises of God's word. In the midst of the battle, John was given a vision of the ultimate hope for all believers, the return of Christ. The angel spoke with a voice filled with triumph. Behold, he comes with the clouds, and every eye will see him, even those who pierced him, and all peoples on earth will mourn because of him. So shall it be. Amen. John's heart soared at the sight of Christ's return. He saw the heavens open, and Christ descending in glory, surrounded by the hosts of heaven. The vision filled him with hope and joy, 
knowing that the final victory was assured. Christ's return would bring an end to all deception and establish his eternal kingdom of peace and righteousness. With renewed determination, John wrote about this glorious event, reminding believers of the promise of Christ's return. He urged them to hold fast to their faith, knowing that their struggles were not in vain. The vision of Christ's return was a powerful motivator, inspiring believers to endure the trials ahead with courage and hope. John's visions were relentless, each one more vivid than the last. He found himself standing on a high mountain, looking down at the great city of Babylon. The angel who had been guiding him stood beside him, pointing towards the city. Look, John, the angel said, the judgment of Babylon is at hand. This great city, the mother of prostitutes and abominations, will fall. God's wrath will be poured out, and her corruption will be laid bare for all to see. John watched in awe and trepidation as the vision unfolded. He saw the opulent streets of Babylon filled with people who had been seduced by its wealth and power. But now, there was a sense of impending doom. The sky grew dark, and the earth began to tremble. John felt the weight of divine judgment in the air. He began to write, describing the vision in detail. He wanted to convey the gravity of what he was seeing, the inevitability of Babylon's fall. This message was crucial for the believers, a reminder that no matter how powerful and corrupt the forces of deception seemed, God's justice would prevail. As John continued to watch, the scene shifted. He saw ten kings who had once supported the Antichrist and Babylon. These kings had grown rich and powerful through their alliance with Babylon. But now, something had changed. John sensed a growing discontent among them. The angel explained, These ten kings will turn against Babylon. They will fulfill God's purpose by bringing about her downfall. They will strip her of her wealth and power, leaving her desolate. John saw the ten kings conspiring together, their faces set with determination. They marched upon Babylon with their armies, and the city's defenses crumbled before them. The once mighty city was laid bare, its treasures plundered, its leaders captured. John wrote about this betrayal with a mixture of awe and understanding. He realized that even the allies of the Antichrist were instruments of God's will. Their betrayal of Babylon was part of the divine plan, a step towards the ultimate victory of God's kingdom. The vision grew more intense as John saw the full extent of Babylon's destruction. Fire rained down from the heavens, consuming the city's grand palaces and temples. The streets, once bustling with commerce and revelry, were now filled with chaos and despair. The people of Babylon wailed and mourned as their world crumbled around them. Fallen! Fallen is Babylon the Great, the angel proclaimed. She has become a dwelling place for demons, a haunt for every unclean spirit. For all the nations have drunk the maddening wine of her adulteries. John's heart pounded as he wrote, capturing the catastrophic fall of Babylon in vivid detail. He described the plumes of smoke rising into the sky the cries of the merchants who had grown wealthy from the city's luxuries and the desolation that followed. The fall of Babylon was not just a physical destruction but a symbolic end to a corrupt and deceitful system that had led many astray. In the aftermath of Babylon's fall, John saw a different scene. The heavens opened and he heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Praise our God, all you his servants, you who fear him, both great and small. A great multitude of voices joined in, singing, Hallelujah! Salvation and glory and power belong to our God, for true and just are his judgments. He has condemned the great prostitute who corrupted the earth by her adulteries. John felt a profound sense of relief and joy as he witnessed this heavenly celebration. The fall of Babylon marked the triumph of God's justice over corruption and deceit. The believers, both in heaven and on earth, rejoiced in the knowledge that their faith had been vindicated. John wrote about this celebration with a sense of reverence and gratitude. He described the joyous praise of the angels and the saints, the unity of their voices proclaiming God's righteousness. This moment of reflection was crucial for the believers, a reminder of the ultimate reward for their perseverance and faith. With Babylon defeated, John's vision turned towards the future. The angel spoke again. The time for the final confrontation is near. The Antichrist will not rest and his forces will rally for one last stand. The believers must be prepared. John saw the believers gathering, their faces resolute and determined. They had endured much, 
But the battle was not yet over. The Antichrist and his followers were regrouping, preparing for a final assault on the faithful. John wrote with urgency, urging the believers to remain vigilant and strong. He reminded them of the spiritual armor they must wear, the belt of truth, the breastplate of righteousness, the shield of faith, the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. These were their weapons in the final battle against the forces of evil. He described the preparations of the believers in detail, their prayers, their gathering and fellowship, their unwavering commitment to stand firm in their faith. This preparation was not just physical, but deeply spiritual, rooted in their trust in God's promises and their readiness to face whatever lay ahead. John's visions returned with renewed intensity. He found himself standing on a vast plain where the armies of the Antichrist were gathering. The angel stood beside him, pointing towards the horizon where dark clouds loomed. The time for the final battle is near, the angel said. The forces of the Antichrist are mustering for one last stand against the faithful. John watched as legions of soldiers, clad in dark armor, assembled under the banners of the Antichrist. Their faces were stern and determined, fueled by the false promises of their leader. The air was thick with tension, a palpable sense of impending conflict. Turning his gaze, John saw the believers gathering as well. Their numbers were fewer, but their resolve was unbreakable. They stood united, ready to face whatever came their way. Among them were men, women and children, all bearing the marks of their faith and the scars of their struggles. John began to write, capturing the scene in vivid detail. He described the stark contrast between the two armies, one driven by deception and fear, the other by faith and hope. The believers knew that this battle would be decisive, and they prepared their hearts and minds for the confrontation ahead. As dawn broke, the battle commenced. John's vision intensified, showing the clash between the forces of darkness and light. The ground shook as the armies charged, the sound of weapons clashing and cries of battle filling the air. John's heart pounded as he witnessed the fierce combat, the bravery of the believers standing in stark contrast to the ruthlessness of the enemy. The angel spoke. This is the culmination of the struggle between truth and deception. The faithful must stand firm, for the Antichrist will use every means to break their spirit. John wrote with urgency, describing the chaos and intensity of the battle. He saw believers standing their ground, wielding the sword of the Spirit with unyielding faith. They fought not just with physical strength, but with the power of prayer and the Word of God. Every blow they struck was a testament to their unwavering belief in God's promises. Despite the overwhelming odds, the believers held their own. John saw acts of incredible courage and sacrifice, moments of divine intervention, where the faithful were miraculously shielded from harm. These scenes of valor and faith became the heart of his narrative, a source of inspiration for all who would read his words. In the midst of the battle, as the forces of the Antichrist seemed poised to overwhelm the believers, a brilliant light broke through the dark clouds. John's vision shifted to the heavens, where he saw angels descending, their wings gleaming with divine radiance. They joined the battle, their presence bringing hope and strength to the beleaguered faithful. The angel beside John spoke with a voice filled with authority. Behold, the Lord's hosts have come to aid the faithful. Their strength will be renewed, and they will not falter. John watched in awe as the angels fought alongside the believers, their power turning the tide of battle. The forces of darkness recoiled, unable to withstand the divine onslaught. The believers, emboldened by this heavenly intervention, pressed forward with renewed vigor. John wrote feverishly, capturing the miraculous events unfolding before him. He described the angels' fierce protection, the believers' revitalized spirit, and the enemy's faltering resolve. This divine intervention was a turning point, a clear sign that God had not abandoned his people. With the tide of battle turning, the Antichrist himself entered the fray. John saw him, a figure of dark majesty wielding great power and authority. He rallied his forces, pushing them to fight with renewed ferocity. The battle reached a fever pitch, the outcome hanging in the balance. But the believers, fortified by their faith and the presence of the angels, stood firm. They confronted the Antichrist with the truth of God's word, their voices rising in a powerful chorus of prayer and proclamation. 
John saw the Antichrist's confidence waver, his power faltering in the face of such unwavering faith. The angel beside John declared, the time of the Antichrist's reign is at an end. His deceptions will be laid bare and his power will be broken. John wrote with determination, chronicling the final moments of the battle. He described the believer's relentless advance, the Antichrist's desperation, and the ultimate triumph of faith over deception. The Antichrist was overthrown, his forces scattered, and the battle won. As the dust settled and the battlefield grew quiet, John saw a new vision. The heavens opened, and he beheld the glorious return of Christ. Clothed in light and majesty, Christ descended, his presence filling the earth with peace and righteousness. The believers, exhausted but victorious, fell to their knees in worship and gratitude. The angel's voice was filled with joy. Behold the King of kings and Lord of lords. His reign will be everlasting, and his kingdom will know no end. John's heart swelled with awe and reverence as he wrote about Christ's return. He described the transformation of the earth, the restoration of all things, and the establishment of Christ's eternal kingdom. The believers were rewarded for their faith and perseverance their sufferings giving way to eternal joy. The vision of Christ's reign was a powerful conclusion to the battle. John wrote with a sense of fulfillment, knowing that this was the ultimate promise for all who remained faithful. The final victory belonged to God, and his kingdom would endure forever. John's visions began to change from the scenes of destruction and judgment to ones filled with light and renewal. He found himself standing in a lush, vibrant landscape, the earth, once marred by the corruption of Babylon and the devastation of the final battles, was now being restored to its original glory. The angel stood beside him and said, Behold, I am making everything new. Write this down, for these words are trustworthy and true. John watched in awe as the broken cities were rebuilt, the polluted rivers ran clear again, and the desolate lands blossomed with life. He saw people from all nations, freed from the chains of deception, working together in harmony to restore the earth. Their faces were filled with joy and peace, reflecting the glory of God's presence among them. John wrote fervently, capturing the beauty of this restoration and the hope it symbolized for all believers. As the vision of the renewed earth continued, John saw a great multitude gathering in a vast open space. It was a celebration like no other. People sang and danced, their voices lifting in praise to God. The air was filled with the sounds of laughter, music, and joyous proclamations of faith. John recognized many faces in the crowd, those who had persevered through the tribulations, the martyrs who had given their lives for their faith, and the believers who had resisted the false teachings of Babylon and the Antichrist. They were now united in their victory celebrating the triumph of God's justice and love, the angel said. These are the faithful, those who have overcome they are gathered here to celebrate the victory of the Lamb. John's heart swelled with emotion as he wrote about this grand celebration. He described the radiant smiles, the heartfelt embraces, and the sense of unity and purpose that filled the air. This moment was a testament to the power of faith and the fulfillment of God's promises. As the celebration continued, John found himself reflecting on the incredible journey that had brought them to this point. He saw flashes of the past, the persecution and suffering, the courage and resilience of the believers, and the divine interventions that had guided them through the darkest times. John felt a profound sense of gratitude and awe. He realized that every trial and tribulation had played a part in strengthening the faith of the believers and preparing them for this moment of triumph. The journey had been arduous, but it had led to a place of ultimate peace and joy. He wrote about this reflection emphasizing the importance of remembering the past and the lessons it had taught. John's words were a call to gratitude and humility, urging the believers to cherish their journey and the faith that had sustained them through it all. The angel then brought John to a serene, peaceful place where the light of God's glory shone brightly. Write this, the angel instructed, for it is the final message to the believers. John's hand trembled slightly as he prepared to write. The angel spoke with a voice full of love and authority. To the faithful know that your journey has not been in vain. You have been tested and have remained true. Now you will dwell with God, and He will dwell with you. He will wipe every tear from your eyes. 
there will be no more death, or mourning, or crying, or pain, for the old order of things has passed away. John wrote these words with a sense of reverence and joy. He knew that this final message was the culmination of all the visions he had received. It was a promise of eternal peace and communion with God, a reassurance that the believer's faithfulness would be rewarded beyond measure. In the final scene, John was given a breathtaking vision of the eternal kingdom. He saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away. The new Jerusalem, shining with the glory of God, descended from heaven like a bride beautifully dressed for her husband. The city was radiant, its streets paved with gold and its walls adorned with precious stones. There was no temple in the city, for the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb were its temple. The city did not need the sun or the moon to shine on it, for the glory of God gave it light, and the Lamb was its lamp. John saw the nations walking by this light, and the kings of the earth bringing their splendor into the city. Its gates would never be shut, for there would be no night there. The river of the water of life, clear as crystal, flowed from the throne of God and of the Lamb down the middle of the great street of the city. On each side of the river stood the tree of life, bearing twelve crops of fruit, yielding its fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. John wrote with tears of joy streaming down his face. This vision of eternity was the ultimate fulfillment of God's promises, a place where love, peace, and righteousness reigned forever. He described the joy and harmony that filled the new Jerusalem, the unending communion with God, and the eternal life that awaited all who had remained faithful.